rosy hardy gardening here. When I was repotting the heuchera, I suddenly found an awful lot of vine weevil in there and I thought perhaps it was a good idea to do that as a separate video for you. Now the one thing that you have to look out for with plants that are in containers is the dreaded vine weevil. So if it's a little bit loose, oh dear, I think we may have a problem with this one. So you will see that when I turn it out that there we are in the container. Oh dear, yes, we have got vine weevil. Now I'm going to pull those out. I think the answer to this one is that really, oh yeah, look, it's just falling apart here as we take it out the plant. So we don't want vine weevil to go back into uh, anywhere. And look what they've done. They have completely chewed off all of the roots. Now, the dreaded vine weevil is something that looks like this. It is a creature that is a beetle during its adult stage, but as its young stage, once it's uh, hatched from its eggs, it becomes this C-shaped with a brown head, a uh, horrible little bug that just is voracious at eating and eating all other things. Now, we tend to just collect them up and check them out. We've got a very good control for these grubs. It's called our robin and the robin absolutely loves them. So at this, your best thing to do is when you have got um, vine weevil in a plant is make sure that you get rid of all of the grubs and, you know, the easiest thing is to squash them. If you don't like squashing them, then by all means, you know, do as we do, collect them together and give them to the birds. It's really good bird food. Um, it's unfortunate there isn't a lot of controls out there now that you can use on vine weevil. So we do use nematodes. And remember, there are different nematodes for vine weevil for different soil temperatures. So the um, nematodes work when you have, oh, look at them, terrible little things. They are just everywhere in here. So I'm just going to pick these all out and make sure that my robin is going to have a beautiful feast today. Um, and there are some tiny ones. There are some bigger ones. We will do a close up of the actual grubs so you can see what they are uh, and then that will be absolutely fine. This is a plant which has got vine weevil and as you can see you've got this really fine almost chewed up and that's basically what it is. It's chewed up compost that it was potted into and that is a telltale sign that you have got vine weevil in this plant because basically all it's done is it's chewed through both root and the soil and it's got itself inside there. Um, so if you're splitting and you see this, it is a sign for you to go, oh, I better have a closer look at those roots. And that will then help you to not have vine weevil in the plant material because they can get right inside into the crown itself. And quite often people go and pot them back up thinking, oh, it's got new fresh root, which it has put on new fresh root like this. But in here is still some vine weevil grub. They are then going to actually go through their metamorphosis and get to the next stage. Then they'll become the adult. And then, unfortunately, the cycle begins again. So you need to get rid of the grubs at the grub stage. So what are we going to do with this? Because the problem is you've now not got any root on this plant. So what we need to do is just see how, see, even a grub right in there, right in the middle of the plant. So we're going to have to actually split this right down and we're going to have to pull it apart. Oh, quite tough. So that's obviously growing quite nicely. You can check whether there is any problem in there that's all nice and clear so that will but oh look there is a little hole there and that's the type of hole that the grubs will get into but no it's not another one in there so that is one like that so what i'm going to do with these is rather than pull them apart i'm actually just going to cut them off 
at the base like so. These are going to now become cuttings because that is all I can do with this plant now is do cuttings from them. So they will be tidied up and then we will be doing cuttings from this plant like so. And you just check that there isn't anything else untoward in the plant. So basically we're not going to need this bit because that is just going to be no good at all. And we can take off some of these little pieces and we will tidy them up and make them all into really good cuttings. Now these heuchras are young seedling ones that we're just testing to see whether they are any good. Some of them may not have the most interesting of foliage but they have fantastic flowers. So we're just having a little look and seeing whether there is anything that is worth. When you see horrible little bits that look as though there's you know almost like sand inside there that means that there is a vine weevil grub somewhere in that area and to be honest it's quite often a good idea and it doesn't matter with things like heuchra if you cut back quite firmly like so because it will then regrow from these um, and you can make cuttings from these pieces so that is something that we will be making and I will show you how to do cuttings from that. Okay so this is showing you how to do the cuttings when your plant has been completely chewed up by the vine weevil. We've got this crown of this plant and you can see there are some lovely pieces on it and all you need to do is pull the pieces off and away from the other bit of crown so that you end up with a few little bits and pieces and then you get left with this solid core at the end well that one will also make into a cutting but you've got to go a little bit so you have to get rid of a little bit of material on here and i would normally go where you can see some of this nice pink growth you've got some horrible tears there so you don't want those actually in it so you would cut across nicely at the bottom get rid of anything get rid of any of this old brown material old leaf stuff that is here just clean it off if it won't pull off very easily then you don't need all of these pieces just trim them up so that the whole thing is really just one tube shaped piece of material and there you have it so then just look to make sure that there's no marks there's nothing gone into the bottom of it like that so that is ready to go in and be a cutting on um, your tray now i have prepared some trays this is cutting compost and basically what i would do with something like this is i would just insert it into the tray like so and then it just sits there and eventually these will go onto um, a hot bed now you can see with this cutting here this has been nibbled at and that is the damage that a vine weevil has done to this is why we've had to completely strip this plant down and make sure so you don't really want these pieces um, and again it's a matter of nice clean cut at the bottom making sure that it is okay you can get rid of some of these other bits and you can score the side if you want to and that action of scoring is very very similar to the action of when we do the root pruning because it has to heal this area and once it heals that area then it puts on more root. This has actually got a little tiny root just coming here. So this one's going to grow quite quickly. And again, we will just insert it into the compost like so. So you just keep on going with all of your um, bits of cutting material that you've got and making sure that you've got a clean, tidy cut here and making sure that you get rid of any of these dag end bits of old leaf you can prepare the whole lot before you get going. Now look, you can see that is where the damage is from the vine weaver and there may even be something still inside there. So you need to cut it off clean and then make sure that you've got it all going like this. So those are ones that I'm going to prepare and they will all go into that seed tray and get going. Let's have a little look 
at one that I did about oh two weeks ago. This tray full of lovely um, heuchra top cuttings, this is another one that had been attacked, has been on a heated bed and they were all little tiny bits. So some of these were much larger pieces that I did. Others were much smaller pieces and they were this size when they went in, cut off. So they've put on some new growth here. And if you look at the bottom of the tray here, I noticed when I brought it through, there is root coming out at the bottom. So let's be a little, you shouldn't do it quite so early, but just from the point of view of demonstration wise, if I just lift up this beautiful bit that has gone in here, look at the amount of root that we've actually got already in two weeks from that type of cutting. Look at that beautiful root. I will be putting these back in, so bless it, it's gonna to have to go back in there again and go off, but it works. So these have been on a little bit of bottom heat, so they've been sitting on the equivalent of an electric blanket, waterproof electric blanket, obviously, and that is then misted over. So they are kept at around about 12 degrees centigrade at centigrade 12 degrees centigrade at the base and then they have dampness over the top so you can do it in a household propagator whatever you've got but just think from one plant I've now ended up with cuttings say what have I got here one two three four five six seven there's about 20 cuttings in there. So that is going to make a beautiful uh, plant when they are potted up a bit later. So what is going to happen to this tray? This tray is going to get filled up. If they're slightly bigger cuttings, I give them a little bit of space. If they are slightly smaller, because you can go as small as these little deers, um, and again, it's exactly the same thing, get rid of any of the old leaf that is not required and then make sure that they've got a nice clean cut at the bottom there and then insert them in and then once they go onto the heat and go through you will then have beautiful rooted cuttings hopefully within two weeks. Thank you very much for listening and please do subscribe to the channel. Nematodes are really, really useful for controlling vine weevil in your heuchra or other plants that are susceptible to vine weevil, such as saxifrages, cyclamen, and well, any of the saxifrage family, so begonias, etc. But do remember that nematodes work at a different soil temperature, and it's soil temperature that is key. It's not the air temperature, and there are different varieties of nematodes that you can get for different times of the year. If you use the product correctly, spring and autumn, you are not going to waste the nematodes that you are putting on. So please remember, spring and autumn application, work out, find out what the temperature is in your pot or in your garden, because it's all about soil temperature, not air temperature, and then you will have successful control, along with just looking out for them, either killing them yourselves or giving them to the birds because they do love them.